Hey guys, it's been a few weeks, but I'm finally back to reviewing. So let's get the ball rolling with a movie that's so bad that it fails before you even open the DVD case. Agent Fox. Really, just look at this cover. It's dripping with warning signs. First of all, what's up with this title? Uh, okay, obviously it's about a fox who's some kind of secret agent, but what's with the period separating the letters in the word fox? Is he called Agent Fox or Agent F-O-X? What does F-O-X stand for? It's gotta stand for something or else why put the periods there? Why is a fox using an acronym for fox as a pseudonym? You're not really doing a good job of concealing your identity with a name like that. You'll also notice how this cover is littered with buzzwords that sum up what you'll find in the movie. Action, danger, adventure, courage, brave, and fearless. Yes, brave and fearless are things that you'll see in this movie. Not a good sign when a graphic designer can't tell the difference between a noun and an adjective. And why is this fox standing in front of the image of a planet Earth that's somehow caught fire? I don't see how this imagery is supposed to make you think of anything other than the Firefox web browser. How is making you think of web browsers supposed to make you want to buy the movie? Hell, if anything, it's more likely to make you think of not buying it, since you'll quickly remember that it's much cheaper to download crappy movies off the internet. And if you look really closely, you'll notice that the background is covered in ones and zeros. Just out of curiosity, I tried to put it all into a binary translator to see if maybe there was some kind of cryptic message staring me in the face, but it gave up after the fourth line since all that this was translating into was this. This movie's entire cover is literally filled to the brim with incomprehensible nonsense. I've been ranting about this movie for about two minutes now and I haven't even pressed play yet! Any of you at home who believe in a higher power, feel free to pray for me. After a little pink dandelion flies by, giving the impression that this is going to rip off Horton Hears a Who for some reason, our movie begins with a little narration. Whenever the wind is blowing, I am reminded of a story. Okay, who are you? A true story that happened many years ago. A true story, huh? <laughs> Funny, I didn't know that foxes had Google Glass or power gloves. But a story that still seems fresh to me today. Are you sure it's fresh? Because it's already starting to stink. And it happened someplace special. The $5 bin at Walmart. It happened in our hearts. So this is going to be a movie about cardiology? After that bit of nonspecific nothing, our movie truly begins with our main character, Agent Fox, flying off to his latest mission in the most inconspicuous aircraft you could ever hope for. Agent Fox! Huh? 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 Oh yeah. Agent Fox, you have arrived at your destination, Carrot Town. The inhabitants are rabid. They are the enemy. Note the long ears, the short tail, and their love of carrots. They are not to be trusted. Aye, aye, sir. No, sorry, movie, but that voice doesn't fit. Looking at this fox on the cover, you'd expect him to sound like a brash, overconfident rogue, like Han Solo or Sly Cooper. But no, they gave him the voice of a little kid who's constantly a failure and has to prove himself to his superiors. Agent Fox, do you know why we sent you on this mission? Uh, because I'm the best inventor out of all the agents? No! We sent you because this is your last chance to prove yourself. You waste all your time on those silly inventions. And if you fail, you'll need to invent a new career, huh? because you'll be fired! Oh, I won't disappoint you, sir! Yeah, you send in a kid who sounds like the manta ray ferret thing from Tentacolino who spends more of his time making crappy inventions than doing his job. That's the kind of guy you want to send on a dangerous undercover mission, isn't it? And why does he need to be told what rabbits are? You do know that foxes eat rabbits, don't you, movie? Within Carrot Town is a precious treasure, the Guardian Amulet. It once belonged to our ancestors. Your mission is simple, Agent Fox. Find it and bring it back. Wow, the Guardian Artifact? That sounds really important. In fact, it's so important that they never even bothered to tell him what it actually is. I'm not kidding. This kid is going into this mission without any idea whatsoever about what this Guardian Artifact looks like or what it even does. They send him in to get it back, and they're counting on him to just guess what the hell he's supposed to be looking for. And I remind you, this is a fox who needs to be briefed on what rabbits are. 
Were there really no other foxes in this agency that they could send? Anyway, Agent Fox lands in Carrot Town, and he begins gathering some intelligence. And it would seem that his super awesome spy glasses have the ability to see the town from any angle at any time. Because science. Several hours of nothing happening later, he begins his search for the artifact. And rather than try to showcase some decent animation, the movie decides it would be much better to randomly select some points in this scene to show off in slow-mo. Look out! He stomped in a soft patch of sand! How incredibly epic! Wouldn't it look amazing if I... I started doing that? Of course not! So he defies the laws of physics in the slums of Whoville for a bit, but very quickly knocks himself out and is discovered by the rabbits the next morning. Oh, and get this. Not only did Agent Fox here need to be reminded of what rabbits are, the rabbits apparently have no idea what foxes are either. Aha! Uh -huh. Yes, I think I found it. You found it? Indeed. Oh, the jig is up. You're a long-tailed rabbit. Long-tailed huh? rabbit? Uh, long-tailed rabbit? How is that possible? How can you have a species that somehow evolved to the point where they have movable type and modern construction capabilities, but they just forgot about the existence of common predators? And I can actually admire a movie trying to teach its child audience about more obscure animal species, but this is a long-tailed rabbit. Contrary-wise, this is a fox. Even dead kids can tell that these aren't the same animal! So they accept him as one of their own, and they decide that he should live in the house of the great inventor who founded Carrot Town years ago. And for some reason, the house is being maintained by a spider who looks and sounds exactly like Dudley Moore. Let's see now. Ginger colored fur, short ears, four legs, less than mine. I've never seen a rabbit quite like you before. Let me get you some tea, Longtail. Oh, go down, go! He tries to look for the artifacts later that night, and I remind you, he has no idea what he's supposed to be looking for. And after some uninspired slapstick and informing his commanding officer that he hasn't found anything yet, he goes back to sleep after accomplishing nothing. Yeah, great, what is it, three days have gone by and so far nothing has happened? Okay, movie, I can wait as long as you can. He figures that the Guardian artifact might be in the care of the Elder Rabbit and he decides that gaining his trust might give him a better chance of finding the Guardian Artifact. So what does he do to gain the Elder's trust? He invents a telephone system for the town, which he can use to spy on the entire population. Ah, so this is how Google got started. So he starts listening in on all the phone calls in town, and he doesn't learn anything. He sneaks around the Elder's house later that night, and he doesn't find anything. This isn't going to be one of those metaphorical things, is it? Like, you can't find the Guardian Artifact until you find it within yourself for something. Because I gotta say, that would be so stupid that... It would actually be really expected in a movie like this. We then see the daughter of the Elder Bunny trying to water some dandelions that she's planted on her roof. All this watering isn't helping. It's just draining away. Hmm. Well, gee, could it be because the roof of a house is a really dumb place to put a garden? Oh, and of course, this bunny girl's name just happens to be Bunny, and it turns out that she's a princess despite her father not being a king. Because why the hell not? Agent Fox helps her dandelion garden flourish, when it would be much easier to simply tell her to move her garden onto the ground, and he uses this opportunity to see if she knows anything about the artifact. Hey, guess what? She doesn't know anything! Next scene! Fox hears some legend of the great inventor having something to do with the town Belfry, and no, we're never told what this legend is either, and he goes in to investigate. But instead of not finding the artifact, he manages to save this sleepwalking bunny from falling to his death, further putting him into better graces with the rest of the town. Break it up, break it up! It's after midnight and you're still horsing around! Mm. With that much energy, maybe I should give you the exam tomorrow. You reap what you sow. Oh. 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 Where did all this wheat come from? Wow. 
That may be the clunkiest transition I have ever seen in my life. Just saying some random colloquialism magically jump cuts you to the next scene? Sheesh, I hope this doesn't become like a running gag or anything, because that really needs to be put to rest. Yeah. Oh yeah, speaking of which, there's this pointless subplot where the Elder is trying to get the other rabbits to memorize the town laws. It goes completely nowhere, and we're never told what these laws are, or how many of them there are exactly, so we have no idea how justified their difficulty in memorizing their laws actually is. This is just another example of how brain-dead they all are. As if we needed such a reminder. Anyway, back to this wheat field that apparently no one but the Elder knew about. Fox gets the idea to cut it all down with the use of a tractor, and he somehow builds one despite him having a reputation of being a terrible inventor and there being a complete lack of any materials necessary to build it! How bad do you have to be when you're making the professor from Gilligan's Island look like a more legitimate scientist? But they quickly lose control of the tractor, and Fox gets pinned down underneath it after all the rabbits make it to safety. <laughs> Yes? Back up! It's gonna explode! We're not gonna leave you behind! Uh. Yes? Uh. 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 No! Really, movie? Really? You give us the prospect of this little moron getting caught in a gasoline explosion, and through the magic of the jump cut, he's just fine with no explanation of how he survived? Screw you right of your poorly written ass with a power drill! And to top things off, it seems like the rabbits are not infuriated by Fox's incineration of their wheat harvest when the tractor blew up. Hooray! We're gonna starve this winter! Have some presents! Oh, and of course, the fox is such a frickin' godsend, one of the rabbit's houses catches a fire, and Fox is the only one who can repair the only fire truck in town just in time to be the hero again. After a formal ceremony where they dub him the Gary Stew of the Year, we finally, FINALLY get an explanation of what the Guardian Artifact really is. I'll tell a story about the origin of the town regulations. When Caratown suffered a famine, the great inventor invented a kind of high-yield wheat that saved the town, but lured foxes to come and rob us. Foxes? Huh? Huh? Oh, oh. But the great inventor defeated them with his inventions. He then chased them into the mountains, and when they were dying of hunger... Dying of hunger? He stretched out a hand to save them. Should he have saved them? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. He did, and the fox commander wrote it all down as a guardian amulet, and that's how the regulations came to be. So town regulations is the guardian amulet. Yep. This guardian artifact that these foxes are so desperate to get their hands on is nothing but the rules and regulations of some rabbit town that has nothing to do with them. For the moment, let's just pretend that this thing actually does have some kind of value to the foxes. Why would they not have a copy of something that THEY THEMSELVES WROTE?! After that weak-ass plot twist, Fox tells his commander to piss off, and the commander then destroys this dam that was never established to flood Carrot Town. Why didn't he just do that to begin with? Of course, these raging floodwaters tearing through the land give Fox plenty of time to whip up a raft, and he uses it to save all of his friends. Oh, I'm safe. Oh, how glorious. How can I ever thank you for saving my life? While that's going on, the Dudley Moore spider starts up Fox's balloon to lift them out of danger. Yeah, thanks for actually showing us this part, movie. You couldn't even give us the cliché of making us think that all hope is lost and then have the balloon show up completely unexpected, huh? Way to ruin the surprise. So Fox confesses to the rabbits what he was really doing in Carrot Town this whole time. I'm not a long-tail rabbit. I'm really a fox. I'm a spy. I just came for the Guardian spy Amulet. Muffin. But I fell in love with Carrot Town. I don't expect you to forgive me. But believe me when I say, I really do love all of you. 
Huh? That you would sacrifice yourself to save each and every one of us tells me that you are a true friend to us rabbits. Huh? Thank you all. To tell you the truth, I knew you were a fox all along. You did? How'd you figure that out? Well, actually, it turns out that he was using a very complicated scientific technique, simply called USING YOUR EYEBALLS! So the rabbits accept Fox as one of their own, and they fly off to God knows where while the unidentified narrator bookends the movie. The cosmos is filled with dandelion seeds. That's why you always smile when the wind blows. Because it's the seed of love taking root in your heart. Can't you hear it now, whispering to you? Actually, I can't. Right now, I'm trying to focus on the movie saying, I'm sorry! Dear sweet Jesus, this movie was stupid. The animation is really amateur. Instead of giving us actual performances, these animators think that making the characters spin around and flail their arms all over the place is the only thing that they have to do. Similarly, the voice actors think that giving them silly voices is all that you have to do to give their characters actual character. The art direction is trying to be creative, but there's no real thought process behind any of it outside of just ripping off Dr. Seuss. The editing is some of the most jarring I've ever seen. The plot doesn't make any sense, it's up to its eyeballs with padding, the dialogue is painful to listen to, and the world it's trying to show us is just ridiculous. Everyone in this movie is a complete moron, except for Agent Fox, who waffles between being an idiot savant and just being an idiot. This is just another movie that thinks that kids are stupid little morons who will happily swallow anything you put in front of them. Frankly, I feel bad for the DVDs that this movie was burned onto. And since I consider myself a compassionate person, it's time to do this DVD a favor. Suddenly you're standing still Your fur is red, so beautiful Like an angel in disguise But if you meet a friendly horse Will you communicate by more oars? More oars? More oars? How will you speak to that? What does the fox say? Oh!